Hi, VN explains here. Today I'm going to explain 2022 American film called Orphan, First Kill. Spoilers ahead watch out and take care. Lena Klammer is a 31-year-old woman with a rare hormonal disorder called hypopituitarism that gives her the appearance of a 10-year-old child. She lives in the Sarn Mental Institution in Estonia and is regarded as their most dangerous patient. In 2007, an art therapy instructor named Anna takes up the therapist post in the institute. Anna is informed of Lena by a doctor and also of the security procedures. As they are talking, a fellow doctor runs up to them and informs that Lena is missing. In no time, the whole facility goes into lockdown and the doctor places Anna in a dark room, assuring her that it is safe before leaving. However, Anna is not alone in the room. And a child sitting behind her is drawing a picture of her. Anna asks her name and low and behold it is the psychopath Lena. The childlike woman holds a sharp pencil in her hand, ready to kill Anna. But before she can do so, luckily, the guards and the doctor arrive and take her away. Some days pass by and Lena orchestrates an escape from the Sarn Institute. She lures a guard into her cell by seducing him, and then talks with him for a while. When the guard is distracted, she suddenly grabs him and bashes his head against the wall, killing him. Then, she sneaks her way out of the facility with the help of her psychotic friend Iditi. Iditi takes down one of the guards, standing near the front entrance in exchange for a piece of candy. It turns out that Lena had already planned everything, revealing that she is not only dangerous, but also a genius. She has tracked Anna's movements in the facility and knows the exact time she departs. Shortly after, she approaches Anna and pretends to run off into the woods, so that Anna will leave her car unattended and run into the facility to inform the doctors. The plan works. And when no one is around, Lena sneaks into the trunk of Anna's car and remains hidden. Inside the facility, Anna informs the doctor about what she just saw. And the latter reassures her that the situation will be handled by the police. Anna then returns home without realizing that Lena is hiding inside her car trunk. When she arrives home, the little psychopath also follows her inside. There, Lena greets Anna with a crowbar to her head, knocking her out. Afterwards, Lena goes up to Anna's study and uses her computer. She looks up missing American girls and finds one that she bears resemblance to. It is about a girl named Esther Albright who went missing in 2003. Confident. Lena dresses up in Anna's clothes and as she is about to leave, she realizes that Anna has woken up. The poor woman begs for mercy but Lena picks up the crowbar and bludgeons her to death. Later at night, the crazy girl heads to a park and pretends as if she is lost. Soon. An Estonian police officer approaches her and inquires if she is fine. Lena introduces herself as Esther Albright, and claims that her parents are in the United States. The scene then cuts to Darien, Connecticut where wealthy artist Alan Albright and his philanthropist wife, Tricia are attending their son, Gunner's fencing tournament. The couple leave the venue after their son wins the game and it soon becomes obvious that Alan has still not come to terms with the disappearance of his daughter Esther. Before they get in the car to head home, they are approached by Detective Donnan, who is in charge of the police search for Esther. Donnan informs Alan and Trisha that their daughter has been found in Estonia, much to their shock and disbelief. The very next day, Trisha travels to Estonia and meets Esther after four long years. She is extremely happy to have her daughter back, and hugs her tightly. After the two reach the States, the family has an emotional reunion at the airport. However, for some reason, Gunnar seems unenthusiastic about meeting his sister. Shortly after, Trisha brings the imposter girl home and immediately starts having doubts when she notices that Esther has forgotten about the death of her grandmother and also because the girl can now draw exceptionally well. The following day, Trisha takes her to the family psychologist, Dr. Seeger, to gain information on her life during her supposed kidnapping in Estonia. After the session, Esther is sent outside the office and the doctor calls in Trisha. As the little psychopath eavesdrops on their conversation, Dr. Seeger says that all of Esther's answers were wrong. For example, she mistakenly called Dr. Seeger's parrot the wrong name even though Esther had known it previously. Hearing this, Esther fakes a fall to intervene in their discussion. She also pretends to get injured, prompting Trisha to leave with her abruptly. As the two are heading home, Esther notices a man clicking pictures of her, who turns out to be none other than Detective Donnan. This worries Esther and she starts fearing that the detective may find out about her soon. After a while, they get home, and Alan begins bonding with Esther over their shared love of painting, which never interested the real Esther. Meanwhile, 
Trisha observes that Esther's apparent return has changed her husband for the better. As he is now more inspired with his artwork and more affectionate towards his family. The same night, as the family is having dinner, Detective Donnan interrupts them. He welcomes Esther back, but seems suspicious of her. Noticing this, Esther leaves the dinner table and eavesdrops on the family's conversation with the detective. Donnan suggests the family have a counseling session with Dr. Seeger to get a better understanding of their daughter during her disappearance. Esther, who has been hearing all this, gets worried that she might get caught. So she goes back to the dinner table and changes the topic right away. Later at night, she plots to run away, thinking that Donnan is onto her butt. Reconsiders when she gets the idea that she can seduce Alan into a romantic relationship. In the next scene, Trisha and Alan are getting ready to attend a party, as they get romantic. Inside their room, Esther spies on them and rips Trisha's dress out of jealousy. Afterwards, the couple leaves Esther home alone with her brother Gunnar. But, instead of spending time with his little sister, Gunnar organizes a backyard party and invites several friends. Esther also joins the party and when Gunnar behaves bluntly towards her, she responds by talking back to him rudely. Suddenly, Detective Donnan arrives at the Albright home. Gunnar answers the door and requests him to leave as he is having a party. However, Donnan insists on using the bathroom. When Gunnar agrees, he enters Esther's room and starts searching through it. He even steals a vinyl record from there, which has Lena's fingerprints on it. As he is leaving, Esther finds out that he has taken the record album from her room and decides to follow him. Here, it is revealed that Trisha knew all along that Lena isn't her daughter. She also confesses that Gunnar accidentally killed the real Esther during an argument four years earlier and she covered it up without Alan's knowledge as she knew it would affect him the most. Following this, she interrogates Esther and finds that she is a murderous psychopath who had escaped a psychiatric facility. Since she could have robbed them and disappeared, Trisha speculates that Lena has a larger scheme in mind, possibly one that involves killing her whole family. However, since Esther's return has ignited a spark in her husband, Trisha wants to keep things going. So, through a mutually beneficial arrangement where they both have something to lose. Trisha compels Lena to continue her ruse and keep quiet. Afterwards, the two throw Donnan's body down the same well where Trisha disposed of the real Esther four years ago. After returning home, Trisha privately tells Gunnar what is really going on and he too agrees to go along with the plan. Over the course of the next few weeks, Trisha coaches Lena on how to fool Dr. Seeger as well as family friends to convince everyone that she is the real Esther. However, the little brat could care less and refuses to be bossed around. Eventually, Trisha gets fed up with her antics and decides to kill Lena by feeding her a poison pasta. But, the plan hits a roadblock when Lena learns that Alan is going on a business trip without her, prompting her to throw a tantrum and leave the dinner table without eating. Later, Lena gives the food to a rat that lives in her room, and a few days later, finds that the rodent has died. With this, she quickly deduces that it's Trisha's work, and decides to take revenge. The next day, Lena retaliates by tricking Trisha into sipping a smoothie containing the dead mouse. As days pass by, Lena and Alan spend more time with each other so her infatuation towards him grows even more. One day, Trisha, Gunnar, and Lena go to a train station to see Alan off on his business trip. There, Lena attempts to kill Trisha and her son by pushing them in front of a moving train. But luckily, her plan is foiled when she is interrupted by a passing commuter. As soon as Trisha realizes this, they leave the station with the intent of killing Lena once and for all. However, Lena pepper sprays Gunner, hijacks Trisha's car and flees. She then plays a song and smokes a cigarette whilst in the car. Little did she know that Trisha has called the cops on her, and that they are already on her tail. In no time, she gets pulled over by a cop, who forces her to return home. Now, Trisha and Gunner are hell-bent on killing Lena, as at this point, she has become too much of a nuisance to have around. Trisha plans to slit Lena's wrists and make her death look like self-destruction, caused by the trauma she experienced during the years she was missing. Shortly after, she leaves Gunnar to take care of Lena, thinking that he can handle her. However, things don't quite go according to plan as the crazy girl breaks free from Gunnar and ends up murdering him with his own fencing sword. In the meantime, Trisha gets distracted by Alan, who calls her to inform her that he is returning home as he also got a call from the police about Esther's fleeing attempt. Then, she returns to check in on Gunnar, only to find him being repeatedly stabbed by Lena. The scene devastates Trisha, and in a fit of rage, she gets into a brutal fight with Lena. She slams 
The girl all over the kitchen and even manages to slash her a few times with a knife. However, during the scuffle, the two inadvertently ignite a fire in the gas burner. The fight shifts away from the kitchen but the burner is left alight and in no time, the house catches on fire. This is still not enough to stop the fight, as the two reach the rooftop, adamant on killing one another. At the same time, Alan returns home to see the horrific scene of his house going up in flames while a vicious fight between the two women ensues on the mansion's roof. During their brawl, both Lena and Trisha lose their balance and end up hanging onto the edge of the house. Alan rushes up to help his supposed daughter and his wife. However, both of them start yelling at him to save them first. But before Alan can make sense of the situation, Trisha loses her grip and falls to her death. Devastated, Alan pulls Lena up and embraces her. But just then, he notices the girl's fake teeth and finally realizes that she is an imposter. He then calls her a monster but this only infuriates Lena, prompting her to push him off the roof. Sadly, Alan also meets the same fate as his wife. Shortly after, as the fire trucks arrive, Lena goes into the burning house where she removes her bloodied ribbons and puts on fresh ones to deflect any suspicion about her. In front of the fireman, she then comes out of the house. In the final scene, Dr. Seeger meets Lena and puts her up for adoption. The movie ends as the psychotic girl gives out a menacing smile, implying that she is about to continue her reign of terror with a new family soon. Like and subscribe this channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.